The New England Patriots 2019 rookie class still has a chance to help the team this season, even though all of the draftees from that class are gone. I'll explain what I mean, so stay locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and welcome to the Locked On Patriots podcast, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I am your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. Pats fans, as always, thank you so much for joining me here today. A special shout out to all of you Locked On Everydayers out there. All of you Locked On loyalists, those of you who make Locked On Patriots possible, unending appreciation to you. As always, folks, I am honored. I am humbled by your support. And Pats fans, a bit of a programming update. Those of you hoping to hear from Bob Heilberg, author and Patriots historian today, we had some scheduling issues this week, unfortunately, some of which were my fault, folks. In fact, Bob and his co-host, Scott Pruzak, Dave Usher, and yours truly have been playing what you would call schedule tag for the last few days. We're trying to reschedule as soon as possible, so keep a sharp eye out there for that. But as you know, there is never a dull moment in Foxborough, and we still have an exciting show for you today because your New England Patriots waived veteran offensive tackle Yadnik Kajust today, and that means that a position that many consider to be the biggest position of need for your New England Patriots heading into the 2023 NFL season got a little thinner. Kajust had received an original round tender from the Pats in March, and that was valued at one year, $2.74 million. As a result of his release, New England will now clear that amount in cap space from their books for 2023. So New England opting for the cap savings, our good friend Miguel was all over this. He's got the updated numbers. Visit him at Pat's Cap for the very latest. Folks, the salary cap, top gun. There is no better in the business. And definitely give him a follow and check out all of the latest cap implications from our man Miguel. But as far as Yadni Kajus goes, the Patriots got him 101 overall in 2019. He was set to become a restricted free agent this season, and he spent the entirety of his rookie season on the non-football injury list. He also missed the 2020 season after being placed on injured reserve with a knee injury. So a lot of health issues prevented Yanni from really being able to fulfill his legacy in pro football or at least live up to his expectation. It really prevented him from even seeing the field all that much. He appeared in seven games for the Patriots in 2021. That's when he made his professional debut, and he started two of them. Now, Yanni had been widely projected as a second-round choice in the 2019 draft. In fact, some had even touted him as a potential first-round talent, but his injury history, again, at West Virginia, allowed him to fall to the Patriots at number 101. And I'll admit, I love the selection when they made it. Yanni looked like a typical Patriots lineman right off the bat. Wide frame, above average initial quickness, great overall athletic ability, and he was quick enough to get into position, strong enough to wall off the defenders at the running game. And even though he had a tendency to give up the edge at times, this was a prospect I thought could thrive either on the inside or the outside for the Patriots. But Ultimately, New England chose to use him mostly at the outside. As a matter of fact, almost all of his on-field action for the Pats came at the tackle position last season. And through 10 games, through three starts, he allowed 12 pressures and three sacks. And even though he was overtaken on the depth chart by midseason by Connor McDermott, who the Patriots signed as a free agent, he was still expected to compete for a spot on the Patriots' depth chart at offensive tackle. Overall, he played in 17 games with New England, and he made five starts. Now, 
Yanni is seemingly out of their plans for 2023. I say seemingly because you never know, folks. There could be a practice squad signing. If he remains out on the open market, the Patriots could choose to bring him back at a much reduced salary. There are a lot of different things that could happen that may end up seeing Yanni Kajust back in a Patriots uniform. If I'm giving my honest opinion based on the analysis and based on what I've heard, I don't believe that's a possibility, but you never know. Even though he's seemingly out, the Patriots are going to move forward, and they've got some veterans on this team. Uh, Trent Brown is most likely your starter, and if Trent is going to be your starter at one of the uh, tackle positions, that means that Connor McDermott, Riley Wraith, Calvin Anderson, Andrew Stuber, and potentially City Sal could be all competing for that second tackle spot. So keep a sharp eye on that. We all know that Isaiah Wynn, he has been the most recent and notable subtraction from a group that is soon to be officially under the direction of new offensive line coach Adrian Clem. He's off with the Miami Dolphins. I got to say it. Isaiah is actually saying all the classy and right things. He met the Miami media a couple of days ago, said that he's looking forward to playing his former team twice a year, and that he has nothing but respect for the Patriots organization that drafted him. So after what seemed to be a very acrimonious, difficult situation throughout most of the season, Isaiah is moving on. You tip the cap and you wish him well. And the Patriots are scheduled to begin OTAs on Monday at Gillette Stadium. So going to be interesting to see who the coaches are working with. Going to get to see a lot more during mini camp. But to be honest, folks, we probably won't know for certain or at least have a very good heading on who may have the inside track until training camp practices start in earnest. And when I say in earnest, I mean the pads coming on. So we've got a little ways to go to see how things are going to go on that offensive line. And even though Yanni's time has come to an end in Foxborough, there's also another end. There's also another book that closes with his release. And that is a book closing on the 2019 NFL draft class. And uh, folks, it's really, it's something. If you've ever seen the movie Major League and you know Harry Doyle, when they say they close the book on Kilmer, yeah, thank God. I think a lot of Patriots fans are feeling that way about this draft class. No matter how you slice it, it just was not one of Bill Belichick's or Nick Casario's finer moments in draft history. Just to give you a little visual, if you are viewing this on YouTube, there it is, folks. There is your class. First rounder, Nikhil Harry. Obviously, we know that didn't work out so well. Nikhil is now catching passes for the Chicago Bears. Jawan Williams, and he signs with the Minnesota Vikings. Chase Winovich, a lot of people love this pick. I was one of them that really liked it. Thought he was a good fit here in New England. Just didn't end up being the fit we all thought it was going to be. He is now playing for the Houston Texans. Damian Harris, probably the most productive, probably the best pick out of this entire draft. And the irony here is that Damian was actually considered one of the weaker picks when the Patriots draft class in 2019 was graded. You won't believe some of the grades that were handed out by a lot of the national pundits. A lot of A's, A minuses, and even A pluses for the Patriots in this draft. Just goes to show you, it's not an exact science, folks. Grading the NFL draft too early is really a futile enterprise, and this draft really proves it. But Damian obviously not here anymore, probably the most productive. He's up in Buffalo. Yadney just getting the axe today from the New England Patriots. Yelda Froholt is a fourth-round selection here. He goes to the Cardinals with Arizona. Jarrett Stidham now with the Broncos after a brief stint with the Las Vegas Raiders last season. And Byron Coward actually just signing on Thursday with the Houston Texans. We'll see if he can hook on big defensive tackle. Just couldn't see the field and couldn't break through a very deep depth chart. Jake Bailey, probably one of the more disappointing ends. A lot of promise, really showed off some great leg work, was a former All-Pro, but an acrimonious end to his time in New England, and now he is punting in Miami. And, of course, rounding out the mix, Ken Webster, cornerback uh, now playing for the CFL. He's playing for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yeah, folks, this is not a great moment for the New England Patriots when it comes to this draft class. But coming up here on the pod in just a moment, there's a 2019 rookie that might be poised to help the offensive line in a big way. And the Pats media contingent met with him on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, we're going to talk about Calvin Anderson today, and I'll tell you all about it 
after we talk about the heir apparent to the starting tackle job opposite Trent Brown. Talking about what motivates Riley Rafe when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, folks, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at Built.com. Folks, if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all of the sugar or the calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever, and that's Built. I say it all the time. All of you everydayers know I love my Built bars. Folks, you've got to try this. I don't know how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built bars at Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. And you can still get your specialty flavors at Built.com. So head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puff. And if you're close to a Sam's Club, even better. Run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter puff and churro puff. Folks, don't delay. Do it today, and you can thank me later. Visit Built.com for Built. You've got to try this. That's fans. Thank you once again for joining me here today on Locked On Patriots, breaking down the Patriots conundrum on the offensive line, specifically at the tackle position. And even though the Patriots are relatively loaded right now at tackle with plenty of names, you can be the judge as to whether or not there's enough talent there to be able to compete or be able to at least put together a formidable offensive line. I happen to think this is a more talented line than people are giving it credit for, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. It's because of a couple of very savvy veteran additions to this line that I think can pay dividends. We're going to start with one of them, and we're going to start with the elder statesman of the two, and that is offensive lineman Riley Reef. And even though Riley has played the majority of his games on a professional football field in his career, he'd be the first to tell you that he's on the north side of 34, not a whole lot of years left in the tank for him, but he continues to be motivated by really, I think, the most common bond that ties every athlete, and that is a ring. And those are his words exactly, right? Pointedly replied when asked what keeps him going by reporters at the stadium on Tuesday. Yeah, he said it, a ring. And that's something you always heard about the New England Patriots. When you wanted a championship, that's where you went. You sacrificed maybe a little bit of money. Maybe you understood that you were going to get a little more dirt on your uniform. But ultimately, the payoff was that championship ring. For those of you that still think that the Patriots don't have that type of cachet, I can tell you Riley Rafe believes they do. And whether or not he's going to be right on that, folks, is a matter of discussion. It's a matter up for debate. But Bill Belichick still has that allure. So don't let people tell you that he's lost his step. And... Rafe is about to enter his 12th season in the NFL, and he's going to be suiting up for a team that's seen its share of success. I mean, New England's chances of winning their seventh Lombardi trophy may not be all that great right now, but Riley Rafe feels that there is something special here. And that's why he agreed to a $5 million contract, $4.15 million of that guaranteed. And he did that shortly after the start of the league year in March. And even though he's going to face some notable competition at the position, Patriots investing that kind of money, that type of financial investment, folks, clearly raises the expectation of him not only earning a roster spot, but also really in contention to be the starter opposite Trent Brown that we talked about in the previous segment. And if they do go with Riley Reef here, folks, they could do a lot worse. They're widely expected to provide significant improvement to a unit that we all know struggled in 2022. Under Matt Patricia, this was a unit that was routinely plagued by injury, inconsistent play, and as a result, the offense regressed to a subpar level, both in pass protection and in run blocking. But Reef comes in with a lot of pedigree and an ability to play solid in both facets. 6'6", 313 pounds, definitely has the size, but I think it's his versatility that really caught New England's sharp eye here. Began his pro career as a first-round selection by the Detroit Lions in 2012. He played both right and left tackle for five seasons. Ten games with Bears in 2022. That came on the heels of a 12-game stint during a run to the AFC Championship with the Cincinnati Bengals. 
And Riley talked about this, about how not getting a chance to play in that game, being in the press box and watching it really kind of whetted his appetite to try to get into the big game and play there. This is a guy that still remains very motivated by winning a championship. And that experience, I think, only fueled his desire to get back to that game. Maybe he sees that in the New England Patriots. We all hope that is the case without any question. I know all of you do, and we do as well. And Rafe has played left tackle before as well. Minnesota Vikings, he did that from 2017 to 2020. So Riley Rafe can play both of the tackle positions, and you can make the argument that he can play both of them adequately. But he'll be the first to tell you it's not easy to toggle back and forth. I don't think the Patriots want to make this a swing situation. Wherever he's most comfortable is, I think, where they'll lead him for the season. Or at least in my humble opinion, that's what they should do. Uh, And I'm using Riley's own words to support this. He told reporters on Tuesday, look, quote, at first it was hard. I'm a little bit used to it now. That's just something where you have to bank on the reps, put the time in to get it right. And even though he started 149 of his 163 career games, he's going to get a chance to do so and compete with some very difficult players to outdo. We talked about Trent Brown. We talked about Calvin Anderson. We're going to talk a little bit more about Calvin Anderson in just a moment. Connor McDermott and potentially rookie City South. So you're looking at guys right now that could give him a run for his money. And even though he's competing with these guys, you know he still feels that he can play with each and every one of them. One that might be a little bittersweet for him to compete with, believe it or not, is James Ferentz. It's his old college teammate with the Iowa Hawkeyes. These guys played together in college. He actually played for Kirk Ferentz, who happens to be James's father at Iowa. So Riley is very well versed in that. And with OTA set to begin on Monday, you're going to start to see these positional competitions start to brew and take shape. But Riley Rafe is not one to rest on his laurels. He's going to take his time becoming acclimated to his new surroundings, and he's going to make sure that he knows everything he needs to know before he starts to kick it into high gear. And he is very level-headed. He concluded his press conference on Tuesday by saying, right now, I'm just worried about learning the playbook. I just want to keep playing. Simple as that. And when he said that with a little sly grin, you got the impression and the understanding that Riley Rafe is not only taking this very seriously, and he knows that this is probably one of the last opportunities he'll have on a football field to truly make an impact. So whether he sees the chance to maybe go for a ring here in New England, or if this might be a stop on the way to try to get a ring, he's going to be highly motivated to be able to show teams what he can do. And a highly motivated player is always a good thing, folks. And it will be for the Pats and for Riley Reef. But Reef is not going to be anointed as the starter. He's going to have some competition. And from the looks of things, the competition that he's going to face in the form of Calvin Anderson might just be a guy with a big-time chip on his shoulder. We'll discuss what put that chip there and why it actually just might be Bill Belichick's fault. We discuss that in just a moment when this episode of the Lock on Patriots podcast wraps up. Patriots fans, thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Locked On Patriots. Again, we are a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And folks, because it's your team every day, that means all of you everydayers out there, all of you loyalists to Locked On Patriots, truly amazed by the support that you provide, the comments, the feedback, the desire to see the show consistently get better. And those of you that buckle up and take a ride with us each and every day on Locked On Patriots, much love, much appreciation, and I hope you continue to do so. And one thing that we've been talking about today, folks, is the offensive line. And if there's something that needed an upgrade, maybe a little bit of a facelift, much like Locked On Patriots does audio and visually, It's the Patriots offensive line, just a dismal performance last year, just a disaster from start to finish in terms of structure, in terms of coaching. I'm not going to say it was a disaster for the players. I really think they did the best job they absolutely could. I think Billy Yates tried to do the best he could coaching that line last year. I think Matt Patricia gave his all as well. I don't want to sit here and turn this into such a negative on Matt. I just think he was overwhelmed and way in over his head. And unfortunately... When things happen of that nature, something's going to suffer. And the play of the offensive line definitely suffered. But there's good news because the Patriots do have reinforcements and veteran reinforcements 
guys that could end up making an impact on this team. And even though the 2019 NFL draft class for the New England Patriots is no longer with us here in Foxborough, there's still an undrafted element to that class that could have an impact on this team in 2023. His name is Calvin Anderson, signed a deal with the New England Patriots shortly after the 2019 NFL draft concluded, and he may be adding his name to what has become a pretty long list of undrafted success stories for the Pats. The dream ended quickly for him, though. Anderson's Patriots tenure in 2019 lasted all of 11 days. The Pats needed a 90-man roster spot to sign tackle Jared Valdir. And they also needed a spot to sign wide receiver Dontrell Inman. So Calvin found himself on the cutting room floor. And at that point, Anderson never really had a chance to really even practice with the Patriots. Went back into the free agent pool by his own admission. He was wondering whether or not there was going to be a situation where he could suit up in 2019. Very fortunate for him, another team bid. He was claimed off of waivers by the New York Jets. Opened the 2019 season on the Jets practice squad but was signed by the Denver Broncos just one month later. And over the course of the last couple of years, he's appeared in 41 games for the Broncos, starting 12 of them. His career's kind of come full circle now, folks. He's back where it all began in New England. Calvin signed a two-year deal worth $7 million with the Patriots in March. He was the first external free agent to agree to terms with New England this offseason. So you know the Patriots had their eye on him. And on Thursday... Patriots reporters had a chance to talk to him for the first time since his return, and he reflected on that road that took him back to Foxborough, the ultimate journey that led him back to New England. And it was all smiles and reflection at the beginning, saying, quote, it's been fun. Obviously, I was here for a brief stint. Kind of a funny story looking back. I can make some humor of it now, but at the time, I was going a little crazy. But as a rookie, you got to learn the ropes somehow. And I ended up benefiting from learning that the NFL was a business very quickly. I went off, created some value, and now I'm back. And I'm hopefully ready to give that value back to the Patriots. We've gone into the deficiencies that the Patriots have had on the offensive line several times. All you everydayers know this has been a hot topic of conversation for the Patriots and for Locked On Patriots specifically, really since the end of the 2022 NFL season. So... Anderson continued on, and the more we heard him talk, the more you kind of saw a little bit of the chip on his shoulders start to emerge. And the next quote bears that out a little bit, saying, quote, I was forced to move on quickly. I didn't have time to really sob over it or anything. It was a really quick turnaround. You got to get back up on your feet if you're going to make it work. I was forced into having it turn into a learning experience very quickly. But I think in retrospect, I give it maybe about a year later, and I was really able to appreciate how much of a benefit it was going through that NFL experience. So he's taking stuff away from it. He's using it as a learning experience, but there's clearly still an element of him that was not happy about the way things happened. Obviously, no one likes to be let go from a job, especially signing and then getting dropped 11 days after you sign your contract. That has got to be excruciating, and it's got to be difficult. So this situation with Calvin now gives him the opportunity to make his Patriots debut. And folks, from the way that they're paying Calvin Anderson, it seems very obvious they intend to have him make that debut. Even if he doesn't earn a starting position, I think he's pretty much roster lock. He's going to be making $4 million this year guaranteed. Much like Riley Reef, these guys were brought in to play. They weren't brought in as camp bodies. And that's something that I think both of these players want to do, especially Anderson. And you hear him use the phrase, do your job, which really, I think, endears him to Patriots Nation because that's what we want. There's still a sign in the Patriots clubhouse that says, do your job. It's still very much a part of the New England Patriots lexicon. And he said that, you know, he says, that's something you just take. I think anybody that comes here will tell you that the idea of doing your job, and I think you carry it through, even though we didn't say those specific words wherever else that I was, the idea of doing your job and how important it was, I think it always gives you a leg up to guys who maybe don't understand that other place. That tells me that he took a lot of this wisdom and counsel that he accumulated in 11 days, mind you folks, to Denver. And he took it there and really showed a lot of the Broncos players what it meant 
to go in and to do your task each and every day without whining, without complaining, just doing your job the way it's instructed to you. And even though it remains to be seen what eventual role he's going to have here with New England, again, I think this almost guarantees him a spot on the roster. That experience that he has, much like Riley Ray, folks, between right and left tackle, currently projects him as the team's top backup at the very least. But I think he could push Rafe, maybe even Trent Brown, folks. We're not completely sure that Trent is automatically going to slide into the starting role. He struggled a little bit last year. I still believe he will be the starter and should be based on this lineup. But training camp can be a very unforgiving thing for a lot of players if you come in not ready to go. By all indications, Trent should be ready to go. But I think this is going to be a very good competition between all three of these guys. I, for one, cannot wait to see what. Calvin Anderson, Riley Rafe, and Trent Brown can do to push each other in camp heading into 2023. And if you think Calvin Anderson forgot about all this, folks, I'm going to quote you exactly how he concluded, essentially concluded, his press conference on Thursday, and you'll find out all you need. And he says, quote, I'd say it made the chip on my shoulder a little bit bigger. You always have a chip on your shoulder going undrafted. I think I had to have a chip on my shoulder leaving this place. I tried to take what I learned. I came back with much more of a business mentality as far as what I was doing and what I was able to give the team that I was on. You have to learn quickly. You're young and think the NFL is going to last forever. And that type of viewpoint pushes you to be better and give your all and give your maximum each and every moment that you step on a football field. Patriots offensive line may end up being okay. It's going to be a lot better than it was in 2022. That's for sure. Adrian Clem has got his hands full, but I think he's got his hands full of guys that can make the plays when you need to make them. And of course, folks, we have just scratched the surface when it comes to discussing the O-line and all of the Patriots positions. And Pats fans, we're going to continue our look into the 2023 New England Patriots as we get a little OTA preview tomorrow to close the week in style. So as always, stay locked into the Locked On Patriots podcast. And before I let you go today, folks, one last bit of love to all our everydayers out there. Thank you so much for your consistent support of the pod. Folks, I am your host, Mike DeBate. And until tomorrow, stay safe, stay well, and be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you back here again tomorrow on Locked On Patriots.